Hi guys! Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jennifer Radke and the name of my website is IWishIWereMe.com and this is a body positive anti-diet space where I help to guide women to loving their bodies right now without having to lose a pound. So today what I want to talk about is why dieting is a bad idea. I do have another video about this. It is my Toastmaster speech that I did that was five to seven minutes long that talked about why dieting doesn't work and it's still valid and still fantastic but I wanted to talk a little bit more about each of the points that I made in that talk to really expand on the idea why dieting isn't the right answer. Why do I say this? I mean The, the trouble is, is that most women look in the mirror and don't like what they see. And instead of coming up with any other solution, the only solution that becomes available to them is that I don't like what I'm seeing in the mirror. I feel big. I need to focus on my health and get smaller. So I need to die. What if I said that maybe there was another option? Instead of dieting, there is another option when we look in the mirror and we feel that sense of discomfort. I mean, that sense of discomfort is very valid. I, there are so many things coming at us to make us have that feeling. Besides the fact that there are a lot of diet companies whose sole goal is to make you think that not only should you lose weight, but you can easily lose weight. There's many different products on the market, including books, online courses, uh, different supplements, different types of shakes and cookies and you name it, they've made it in a diet food. Those are outward manifestations of this idea that we, we need and we can diet. But there's bigger forces at work. Pharmaceutical companies and surgery companies have created an environment where they have a lot of money and a lot of ability to actually get changes made. And I'm probably not going to go into that here because I think that it could be a whole other video about how most especially the, the example that I can give you is in terms of the BMI and the body mass index if you don't know what I'm talking about is that chart that you've probably seen maybe even at a doctor's office that shows heights and weights and puts people into these normal overweight and obese categories and that chart the history behind that chart will tell you that the insurance companies had a, had a play in making the BMI what it is today and pharmaceutical companies had a big say in what those numbers and categories actually became. And so it becomes a very unscientific tool to help you decide whether or not you are, whether or not your body is normal. Again, probably a whole other video, but it suffice to say that it is a reasonable reaction to look into the mirror and feel uncomfortable with our bodies and think that dieting is the answer. And there's, I think, three major reasons why this is a fallacy. The first one is that diets don't work. Most studies that have been done, especially long-term studies that have been done, show that people regain the weight within two to five years, and then some. The people who do actually keep the weight off, and, and you can take a look at the national, um, oh, what is it called, National Weight Registry, they've actually gone ahead and actually asked people who kept 30 pounds off for more than two years or more than a year to register with them and they have started to collect data on these groups of people. 
because, you know, everybody wants to know how you maintain weight loss. What they found is that the average woman who has kept the weight off has eats about 1,300 calories a day and does 30 to 60 minutes of high intensity exercise every day. You cannot tell me that's what you want to do for the rest of your life. To me, that's not healthy. So is that working? In my opinion, no. Especially when 95 to 98% of people will actually regain the weight. Okay, so let's say we believe that. And if, if you don't believe me on that one, take a look at the book Health at Every Size by Dr. Linda Bacon. Not only does she go into a study in Chapter 7 there where they actually had a group of women that they took through a diet program and a group of women that they took through what they call a Health at Every Size program where the focus was on health and not on weight. And you can compare those two. And you'll see that the, the dieting control group who had everything that you would think you would need to have in order to have this fantastic uh, experience with dieting, You've ha you have all the coaching that you want, you have an accountability partner, you have meetings that you're meeting with all the time, you can ask all the questions you want, and yet most of these people failed and they all regained the weight. So it's not winning. But Dr. Linda Bacon's book also has a number of other studies that you can reference that prove the point that dieting, especially if we look at long-term dieting studies, does not work. The second point I want to make about dieting and why it doesn't work is that dieting perpetuates eating disorders. Now, follow me here, because I think some of you are going, what's the harm in trying to just, you know, reduce my portion sizes or just, you know, not eat the sweets at night? And I'm going to tell you from my personal experience. So the very first diet I ever did, first mass marketed actual um, diet plan that I was on was Weight Watchers, as many people come to this work started off with. And I think I was 22, 23, 24, something, in, somewhere in there. And I just wanted to lose a few pounds for my wedding. <laughs> that started me on a decades-long diet cycle. Because I did Weight Watchers, I quickly lost weight. There's a bit of a high that comes from getting on the scale every week and seeing those numbers go down. Accessing a goal, being able to check something off, knowing you're accomplishing something. And that's what happened to me. When the diet was done, I started to eat normally again. And I gained weight back. Maybe not very fast. It was a slow weight gain, but I gained the weight back. After I had gained the weight back, I thought, well, it worked the last time, so I'll just go on Weight Watchers again. So I did. I went on Weight Watchers again. It didn't work the second time. <laughs> it was really tough because I would be following the plan exactly and I wouldn't lose weight. And I would get on the scale and I would get so frustrated because I was hungry. So what I did was I tried a different diet. Instead of going, well, maybe the problem is with, is with dieting in general. Most of us don't do that. I said, I need a different diet. So this kind of started the process of me jumping into diets. And when they stopped working, going on to another diet. So throughout this time period, from the time I started, you know, these kind of more structured diet plans, to the time I finished three years ago, I did 15 or so diets. I reached my goal weight five times. I did two bodybuilding shows. I landed up in the hospital once and I was diagnosed with an eating disorder. So it is 
definitely something that I am familiar with is this diet cycle that happens. And, and the, the high that you get from being on a diet, following it exactly, seeing the numbers go down. But what also happens is that you become connected to the idea that thinner is better. And if, if you are like me and you do end up doing more than one diet, chances are good that you're going to start to pick up some unhealthy, healthy habits. That's what I call them, unhealthy, healthy habits. Go onto my website, onto the freebies to grab a quick quiz to find out how many of these unhealthy, healthy habits you have. Things like having a whole weigh-in day ritual that started 24 hours before the weigh-in. Uh, tracking everything to the point where I was making sure that I didn't eat anything that was off my meal plan. Having entire days where I prepped my meals for the week. Not just hours, days. Having the point where I was exercising for three to four hours a day. This has gotten to a point where most people would say exercise is healthy, but it's crossed a line. And this is the type of, of thing where you're striving so hard for the ultimate goal of thinness that it gets into this dangerous territory. And again, it goes back to what I was saying at the beginning. It's, it's, it's a, this is what our culture is telling us to do when we feel uncomfortable in our body. So is it no wonder that it can, for some women, turn into disordered eating, chronic dieting, eating disorders. The last reason why dieting doesn't work is that dieting isn't an indicator of your health. Your weight isn't an indicator of your health. Some of you have heard me talk about this. If you've watched any of my other videos, I talk about the super semen. So this was a study that was done out of SFU where the uh, researcher looked at a group of, of men and women who had, were at least 80 years old and had uh, never been diagnosed with one of these big five diseases. So that was cancer, uh, diabetes, dementia, cardiovascular disease, and lung disease. And there's some really big things that she can say about these people and their habits and things that they've done, but one of the things she mentions is that some of these people are obese. So how, if we want to say that health is living to a great age, and enjoying your life, being able to, uh, you know, basically be disease free, I would say that these people fit the bill. And yet some of them are obese. So you can't tell me that these people are not healthy and yet they are fit into that obese category on the BMI. So I guess what I'm saying is that just by looking at a person, you cannot tell whether or not they're healthy. You cannot tell whether or not they have been diagnosed with a disease. You cannot tell whether or not they exercise every day. You cannot tell whether or not they quote unquote eat healthy. You can't tell that by looking at a person. So dieting is not a way to get healthier. There are ways to be healthier, but having a good relationship with food is definitely one of them. And that is not found in restricting the amount of food that you're eating or having the type of relationship with food where every food gets put into the category of good or bad or where you are monitoring everything that you're eating. So in conclusion, there are three reasons why when you look in the mirror and you're feeling some body discomfort, you're not liking what you're seeing, that dieting should not be your answer. The first is that diets don't 
work. Over the long haul, they're, you're not actually going to be thin. And if you're anything like me and you have a tendency to, when the weight comes back, want to re-diet again, that can push you into reason number two why diets don't work, is that they perpetuate and really they, they really do push women towards eating disorders. And not just eating disorders, but things like disordered eating and chronic dieting, which are not actually registered as eating disorders, but are problematic. And the third and last reason why dieting is a bad idea is that being thinner does not actually mean you are healthier. Dieting will not get you closer to your health goals. So, on today, International No Diet Day, even though when this gets posted it'll be tomorrow, so it was yesterday. Those are my three reasons why I think we need to look at other options. My favorite option, the best option in my opinion, is to start to live a life where you are adapting health at every size, intuitive eating, body positivity, body liberation, body respect. But maybe that's not the answer you're seeking. Anyway, those are my three reasons why dieting doesn't work. Please feel free to reach out to me on my website if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or if you're interested in my very free dieting sucks, quiz that's on the uh, freebies tab or my body image bingo card that's right there on the front page which I think you will love. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day.